Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Ask Here live studio session. My name is Joan and my pronouns are she and her and I'm a student recruitment officer with Memorial University. I was also a student here once as well. I did my undergrad in psychology, majored in psych, minored in French, and then I went on to do my master's in counseling psych after that in the education faculty. Um, I'm today joined with Samantha Kenny and Dr. Dolores Mullings from the School of Social Work, and they're here to answer all of your questions that you might have about their undergraduate programs. Before I get started, I just have a couple of housekeeping items to go over. So this session is being recorded, which means if you're participating, then you're consenting to having that recorded. Your mics are muted and your video is turned off, so all you'll see here today with us is the panelists, um, but you're going to be joined by the rest of the participants as well. You just can't see them. And to help easily facilitate the bandwidth, we're just going to keep those videos off and, uh, and keep your mics off. But if you have questions, please send them in and use the question and answer feature to all panelists so that we can see those. Today's focus is, of course, the School of Social Work, so we're going to keep our questions related to that. And if you do have a question we don't get to right in the moment, don't worry. Someone's going to directly message you or follow up with you afterwards in an email at the end of the session. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to ask you folks to introduce yourselves and your roles within the School of Social Work. So, Samantha, you're the first up on my screen. Would you like to give it an intro there? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Samantha Kinney, and I'm the student liaison officer with the School of Social Work. So, primarily, my role at the School of Social Work is working with undergraduate students who are interested in pursuing the Bachelor of Social Work program. Our BSW program is a competitive program, so I often work with students to make sure they're meeting the minimum requirements, for example. Uh, like Joan, I'm also an alumni of Memorial University. I did my Bachelor of Social Work at MUN, and I'm also a current graduate student at MUN. So I guess I just can't stay away. <laughs> I'm here to answer any questions about a degree in social work or a career in social work. And just to plug my own little uh, event, if you are planning on applying uh, next year, I am doing a virtual session specifically about the BSW 2021 application on Wednesday, November 25th. And if you're interested in attending, you can send an email to bswinquiries at mun.ca. And I'm just gonna get Jennifer to pop that in the chat there so you can all have that email. And I'm happy to meet with any student um, virtually right now. If you wanna make an appointment to talk about the program, certainly reach out to that email address as well. So I'm just gonna hand it over now to Dolores. Let me unmute. First, I'd like to acknowledge that the lands in which Memorial University's campuses are situated are in the traditional territories of diverse Indigenous groups, and we acknowledge with respect to this to the histories and cultures of the Beothic, the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of this province. I also want to pay homage to my Afri people of African descent who originally brought to Turtle Island forcibly and whose blood color the waters and the earth of the West. Welcome everyone. So you already know my name is Dolores Mullings. I'm the current interim associate dean of undergraduate programs here at the school. And I'm so thrilled to hear that you're interested in studying with us. Studying is fun here at Mun School of Social Work. Ask anyone that's in the program. So as the world responds to the COVID-19 pandemic, we currently live in a time of increased fear and uncertainty but also a time when we are hearing voices around the globe rise against, rise up against systemic anti-Black racism, systemic racism, and decolonization, and, um, and decolonization, and speak about the need for social justice 
and social action. You've seen many of those people in the streets on your TV, and maybe you were among some of those that were in the streets and um, on TV. Um, so a degree in social work can help you learn to address personal uh, issues, local, national, and international um, concerns from a critical lens. And basically that means that in our program, we help you to understand how to think differently and how to appreciate different ways of being and, and different ideas and thoughts. But we also encourage you to turn things over, even when things seems obvious, we encourage you to look at it again and turn it around because you're guaranteed to see something else. So the School of Social Work at Memorial University um, is the only um, institution that provides social work education. And here at MUN School of Social Work, we have lots of programs. Um, that's why people keep coming back. We have BSW programs, we have two of those. We have an MSW program and we have a PhD program. And we're really proud that all of our programs are accredited by the Canadian Association of Schools of Social Work Education. So our graduate degree offer offerings include, well, I just told you. So the, the main um, area of the uh, BSW program is to develop social workers with generally based skills for working with um, people. So individuals, families, communities, groups. And both programs include about uh, 300 hours of internship or what we call practica. Um, they're on campus and they're full-time. Uh, the BSW is the first step to a brilliant um, career. You can go almost anywhere into any, um, I almost said any profession, but you can go almost anywhere with a social work degree, especially because we have a generalist programs. So our graduates work in multiple creative, dynamic um, areas. They work in cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary areas, working with individuals, families, groups, and communities. Um, and the work that social workers do actually support individuals to collectively be their best selves in spite systemic uh, discrimination or marginalization that they may feel. So some examples of social work, um, what social workers do, um, these are just a few, um, is you know, work in nonprofit community-based organizations like here, um, Choices for Youth, for example, working with um, individuals, um, in a one-on-one -on -one therapeutic relationship, I actually want to downplay that piece because when you finish your social work, your Bachelor of Social Work Education, you're not going to be trained to do any kind of therapeutic work with individuals, but you will be trained to support people with lay counseling when they're going through um, life changes. Um, you might also be advocating for fair and equitable services for people. So one of the big pieces of work that social workers do is actually support people who are systemically marginalized and we help them in places that they're not able to help themselves. So we do a lot of advocacy work. You might also work in government agencies. And as I said, the sky's the limit where you can go and what you can do after you finish your social work degree. And so Samantha has just introduced herself and she's already told you that she's the person that you will um, speak with. If you have questions about um, entering the social work program, she's our front end rock star. And so if you have any questions regarding, applic regarding applications and what to expect, even when you get into the program, Samantha is your go-to person. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Mullings. It sounds like the sky's really the limit there with the School of Social Work. The options seem endless. 
Um, so to get us all started, just a quick reminder, the question and answer feature within the WebEx platform um, using the function that says to all panelists is what you're going to need to use to submit your questions. And we really want to hear those today. So be sure to use that function to get those in. Um, our first question we have is about what kind of major areas or degree program options you have in the School of Social Work, which you kind of mentioned a little bit about, um, but within that Bachelor of Social Work program, how do students kind of find their way in terms of getting into a specific area of social work? I can get started on that question. And um, if Dolores has anything to add, I would encourage her to do so. Um, in terms of like when, like Dolores said, our program is a generalist program. So what that means is we prepare students to work with individuals, communities, groups, families in many different areas. So you're not specialized per se. So you're not going, you know, and I really like um, what Dolores said about, you know, you're not trained to be a one on one therapeutic counselor. Um, some students later in their degrees um, pursue a graduate degree, maybe a master's of social work, and they spe specialize in a specific area. I think that's where you would get into um, really moving into an in an area of expertise. I would say, though, with the BSW program, there are two practicum opportunities. And I always encourage students who, you know, if you're really interested in working with communities, if you're interested in working with nonprofit, then you have two opportunities there to really get some hands on experience in an area that you'd like to work in. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and so I can add to that, um, that when you're in, if you're lucky to be selected after your application to be in our program, while we have a generalist program, you can still focus on areas that you like. So in every course, you have the ability to choose assignments that are based on your personal preferences. So when I did my undergraduate degrees more than 100 years ago, um, I focused on older people and I focused on policy because those were my first two social work loves. And I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to find a social work policy related jobs, although there are tons of them out there. Um, I didn't know it then, but I know now. Um, and because Canada and Newfoundland and Labrador specifically has an aging population, there is a lot of work too with older populations. So you can develop your own sub expertise in your area, even though we have a generalist program. And that's one of the ways you can do that. Um, as Samantha said, you can, you know, you might not be able to get your practicum in those areas, but there's always an opportunity to um, find your way around what your specialty is going to be. Okay, so there's a lot of room to work those passion areas into the coursework that you're completing while you're doing your degree program. Awesome. Okay, so our next question is a little bit more specific about individuals who are coming in directly from high school. They're wondering what courses they need to take in order to get into social work. Samantha, you might be able to speak to that one. Yes, so there are 10 prerequisite courses that are required for the first degree program. So students coming from high school, if you were to apply in for your second year in social work, so your first year is the prerequisites to apply for your second year. If you were to come in and want to do those 10 courses right away, there are is a lot of choice within them. So there's no um, we have what you call learning objectives in different areas and there's a number of courses you can choose from as part of those courses i have a sample um, first year that i generally email out to students who would like to have that so i would say get in touch with me directly because where there are so many options for those 10 courses it gets a little tangly when i start um, naming off specific courses because we'd be here for a really long time <laughs> Fair. 
That's true. Um, awesome. Okay. And our next question is about volunteer hours. So that's a component of your admission requirements. Um, and it varies a little bit based on the program you do, right? Um, would you be able to speak a little bit more to the admission requirements surrounding the volunteer hours? And where's the best place for students to get those? Oh, the famous question. <laughs> um, so for the first degree program, we require 60 hours. And for the second degree program, we require 300 hours. That's the minimum. And what we require is what we call verified work experience, volunteer experience, and or community involvement in the human services related to social work, which I know is a mouthful. Um, we try to make it broad because we know students' experiences are very varied and broad. We don't recommend specific experiences, um, and I tell all students that we don't recommend specific experiences or offer advice to prospective students on specific agencies or, um, you know, specific roles that is going to really look good on your application because we realize that everybody comes to social work on a different path, and it is really the student's responsibility to on their application to ensure that it's clear that those experiences are related to social work. Um, some tips I generally give is that you can include experiences that are paid or unpaid. So I get a lot of questions around volunteer work. It's great if it's volunteer work. However, we don't look at experiences any different in differently in terms of whether you were paid or not. What we do look at is relevance so the relevance to social work so you can go back to that definition that's in our university calendar um, around what experience is we consider the number of hours so some students apply with 60 hours or 300 which are the minimums and then some students apply with many more and then we look at diversity so did the applicant have a number of different roles and responsibilities within one experience or did they work with a number of different areas or agencies? All of those things come into consideration when assessing those experiences. So there is no, unfortunately, there is no magic answer, but fortunately in that, you know, we appreciate the places that students are coming from and we value the experiences you have. So the definition is really broad because social work is related to so many different um, areas and skills and abilities that we try to make it broad because we know um, that students have a lot of different experiences. The other thing is, is we, you're applying to a social work program. We don't expect you to have social work experience in terms of as a social worker. I think sometimes that can be intimidating for applicants, but we know, we know that you want to get that experience so you can, you know, get into the program and then pursue social work. We know that you're not coming in with social work experience as a social worker. It's about relatable experiences to social work and the human services. So, you know, think about helping individuals, communities, groups, um, advocating, um, pursuing social justice, looking at the core values of the profession, which you will learn about all in Social Work 1710 if you choose to do that course as it's one of the prerequisites for our program. You know, really critically think about what is social work. And I really, you know, there's a lot of relevance that you'll find when considering those points. So hopefully that's helpful. I know it's not directly answering the question, but I promise that I don't um, recommend specific experiences to any student. And um, I can add to that in terms of, you know, there are, some of you may live in small communities or rural areas where the opportunities for what you might consider real volunteer work does not exist. So we consider creative ways in which you have been able to contribute to your communities um, through volunteering. The other thing to remember too is that social work is really not about helping. It is about helping people to position them in places for them to help themselves. We really are trying to shift away from us thinking that we're holding people's hands because a lot of us get into social work because 
we have been harmed in some way, or, you know, we've been helped by the social worker and we want to be in that place to help. And so we come to social work that, you know, we want to help. So one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do is shift away from the notion of helping because you might have done some amazing volunteer or paid work that was not helping necessarily, you see? So just consider broadly your contribution to humanity and to your communities. Um, and that you can, you know, certainly strategize how to um, explain that in your application. So don't shy away from if you didn't help anybody or if you didn't help a group, you know, what that might look like. There are also limitations to in terms of, you know, maybe you're coming from another country. I don't know where volunteering looks very different from what, what it looks like here in North America and certainly here in Newfoundland and Labrador, right? Um, and so we want to really encourage you to not exclude yourself, better to include yourself and put yourself in the application process and let us help you to um, tease those pieces out further when you get into the program. Awesome. Thank you for that. So then our next question is about um, the work terms or the practicum and whether or not you can choose the area that you're going to be working in when you do those those placements. Samantha, might you be able to weigh in on that one? Sure. So the, we have a field education team at the School of Social Work and they help to coordinate every student's placements, so their internships. I believe they'll work with the students in terms of the preferences. However, given um, that there's only a certain amount of availability, particularly within Newfoundland and Labrador, although there are options to go, um, we've had students go to other provinces. Um, at the end of the day, it's the field education team's um, decision around where students will go. And there's also interview processes involved. So they coordinate all the interviews with all different agencies. Certainly, if there's an area that you want your, you know, that's the area you want to work in, um, I would encourage students to express that to the field education team once in the program. And then also keep an open mind because, you know, I know a lot of students come into the program and again, they think that they're going to work in this specific area and that's the only thing they want to do. And then they get a field opportunity in a completely different other area and it changes their perspective. So I would say certainly um, we'll work with you, but at the same time, keep an open mind to the different experiences that you can obtain in the program. I don't know, Dolores, do you have anything to add to that? I don't know if I answered it. Yeah, um, I, I, I support exactly what you've said what what i would sort of like stretch a little bit further is the notion of coming in with an idea and choosing that idea because what what we've seen a lot is that actually even sometimes when students get to the placement for the interviews they sort of decide that mm, i you know i thought i really like this but this placement is not going to work for me and so, you know, because you have multiple interviews for placements, you might change your mind. But the other thing is we have the most amazing field team. I have, I've been involved with a lot of schools of social work. I have never seen a team that flat out goes beyond the basic for students in our program. And I'm talking about working nights, weekends, during this COVID, we cannot even imagine the work that they did to make sure that our students got placement next semester. Can you imagine getting a placement during COVID where you're physically on site? Just think about that. They're amazing. And so one of their one of the amazingness about them is the intuitiveness of them. They know you in the program. They sometimes are facilitating your courses or teaching. And so they can help you. You might say, I want to be with Boys and Girls Club, but because of how you've been in their courses, 
they might say, you know what, I think you're actually a rock star in this area. I know you're probably really excited about this, but have you considered this? So those are some of the things that they actually do to help you decide, you know, where your strengths lies and where you're going to be the best rock star. Awesome. So going in, having that idea, but keeping the open mind for sure. All great, great advice there. Um, and so our last question before we get fully wrapped up here is about if um, online versus in-person hours are counted for the application. So is there any difference between if that volunteer work was done online or whether it was in person? So there is, uh, there's nothing in our definition that says online versus in person. We have accepted many opportunities in the past that were remote. Um, it's about more about relevance. So going back to the relevance to social work rather than whether in person or online. And right now, I mean, in this current world, most of us are working remotely. Um, so a lot of the experiences that previously would have been in person have shifted to uh, remote platforms. So certainly don't not include those types of experiences. Awesome. And uh, folks, I know there's a couple questions we didn't get to, but I promise we'll follow up with you after the session. And Dolores and Samantha, do you have any last thoughts, any key tips or tricks for our prospective students that are here joining with us today? So, I mean, if you're planning on applying next year or even in a year future after that, I would definitely get in touch with me about the information session. I'm going to, we have a brand new application. Um, that we're using. So I'm going to go through that with prospective students on November 25th from 12 to 1. And otherwise, if you have a question, ask. Um, we're here to help. And, you know, if you are interested in social work, get in touch and, and we can chat. Dolores? Yeah, Samantha is our front end rock star. And I mean it. You see how much <laughs> she knows about our program and you see how much she's smiling, she's enjoying working with you as you're preparing your application even if you have a question that you think have been answered here today or you think she's answered it already still ask it she's amazing at making things look crystal clear i've had to learn a lot from her um, and as you put your application together put your best self forward don't shortcut anything we want to see your brilliance we want to see your best because we're looking for students that are going to be the most amazing social workers out there because you have seen what's been happening around the world if you haven't noticed it before. We need more of you on the front lines more than ever before. So make sure that you count, that you put your best self forward and make your application shine so that we have no choice but to accept you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Awesome, folks. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Mullings and Samantha and everybody that's live with us as well. If you folks have any other questions that come up after the session, feel free to email Samantha. Her contact info is in the chat. Or, or if you have general questions about the university, admissions at mun.ca is another great place for you to send those off and we can direct you to the right people. Um, and be sure to check out our next session as well with the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences on Tuesday, November 17th at 4 p.m. Newfoundland time. All right, have a fabulous day, folks. Take good care.